It's 8.36 on FLX Morning. We're scholastically speaking this morning with our friends from Finger Lakes Community College, and we'd like to welcome in an Associate Professor of Computing Services from FLCC from Brighton, Jonathan Weissman. Jonathan, good morning. How are you today, sir? Good morning. Nice to chat with you. Now, I want to get into uh, a little bit deeper of uh, what it is you do and the accreditation that you've just received. But first off, kind of give us a background on how you got into computing sciences. Well, I grew up around digital uh, devices, just like my kids are right now, although on a uh, smaller scale. And my love for computing was brought out by the fact that my dad had a love of computing. So I was exposed to uh, early devices. One of the first computers that that I used was a uh, TRS-80 Model 2, affectionately known as the Trash 80. Oh, God, I remember those. Yeah, and back in the Commodore 64 days. Yes. That's right. Good old 8-inch floppy disks. Wow. That is definitely a flashback. But obviously, technology has made quantum leaps since that point. It's unbelievable. Uh, When you think about the phones that are in our pockets nowadays having uh, exponentially greater number of uh, processing power and storage capabilities than those large bulky machines of the past technology gets smaller and smaller and smaller better and better and better and most cases cheaper and cheaper and cheaper yeah i often say that we're walking around with little computers that we just happen to make phone calls on it's true. Uh, most people don't use the phone for the phone purpose nowadays as their no. primary usage. No, not much at all. So what led you into the teaching profession to become an associate professor? So I I had a love of computers and just so happened with the circumstances um, that aligned really perfectly, I was uh, set to take a very respectable certification, which is still very respectable, the Cisco CCNA certification and i was taking a course to prep for that particular certification at essex county college in newark new jersey where my dad has been a professor for a bunch of decades and just so happens that the chairperson of the math department where he teaches still teaches there uh came up to me and said hey uh, jonathan we need somebody to fill in the teach a math class uh you interested in it and i said okay i never had really given a thought to uh, teaching, but I I jumped right in. And you know what? From the first class that I taught back in 2001 at Essex County College in Newark, New Jersey, I was hooked. It became my passion right off off from the start. I, I have an absolute passion of being in the classroom and teaching. It started right away. And at that point, I decided to get my master's so I could become a full time professor. Got my master's at Brooklyn College in computer science found an opening at Finger Lakes Community College, uh, looking around in uh, spring of 2006 or so. They were actually looking for somebody with my specialty at that point in time, networking. And it was just really like a match made in heaven. It was predestined, in my opinion, that uh, my love of computing would be coupled with my love of teaching and bring me upstate from my uh, Staten Island roots. We're talking with Jonathan Weissman, Associate Professor of Computing Sciences at FLCC. And I want to get into the accreditation, the uh, honor that you just received from a global organization. Kind of break that down for us. Sure. There is an organization known as the IPv6 Forum. And what they're doing, their, their motivation, their main goal is to create awareness about deploying this new protocol known as IEPv6. We say new protocol because it's just starting to see the light of day, but it was actually designed in the 90s. And this organization has ties to international internet vendors, internet experts, researchers, education networks. They have associations with major internet organizations like ICANN, the Internet Society, and other really major organizations. And The organization looks to promote IPv6 applications, websites, web servers, ISPs, and everything related to this new protocol. And you're probably wondering at this point, right, what what the heck is this IPv6 IPv6 thing? So let me back up just a little bit. And when we talk about Internet protocol addressing, that's how devices uh, are addressed, and that's how we communicate 
uh, from one source on the internet or just a plain old network to another network, the original addressing scheme that was deployed in the 80s was known as IPv4. And it was just an experiment. There were only, there was supposed to be just some experimental usage with researchers and organizations and institutions. And you know what it turned into? The ARPANET, the Advanced Research Projects Agency Network, it turned into this thing we call the internet today. So back in the 80s, this IPv4 addressing scheme was designed with 4.3 billion unique addresses. So 4.3 billion addresses, that's, that's more than enough for that little experiment that they had back in the 80s. Would you agree? <laughs> and so now, yeah, now the problem talking, is that kind of similar to when you run out of exchanges in an area code, we've run out of IPv4 IP addresses. And, you know, the leading drivers uh, that got us to the point where we are today are the explosion of mobile devices and Internet of Things devices. These are devices, uh, you know, when the Internet was uh, first commercialized and people started using the Internet, it was people using the Internet to communicate with other people and devices. And nowadays we have devices talking to devices, your washing machine, your wristwatch, your car, your crockpot, devices in a smart home, devices in factories, shops, and hospitals, and schools. All of those devices, when you think about it, there are some estimates that we are now in the tens of billions of those Internet of Things devices. And we're not, not even talking about just the fact that people are walking around with uh, mobile phones and, uh, and tablets and all sorts of other gadgets on their person. So that number, 4.3 billion addresses, that became a problem. And we knew that right off the bat it was going to be a problem, uh, but it really became dramatically bad over uh, the last uh, decade or so with the explosion of IoT, Internet of Things, and mobile devices. And that's why this protocol known as IPv6 is very important at this point in time. The organization that's responsible for IP addresses in the United States, Canada, and a lot of Caribbean and North Atlantic Islands, ARIN, A-R-I-N, the American Registry of Internet Numbers, they are in charge of that partic this particular location of the world for those IP addresses. And when, when we're talking about all these devices that need IP addresses right now, IPv6 just won't cut it. And uh, I, I published a uh, blog on Aaron's website a bunch of years ago talking about this course that I teach for FLCC. I've taught it since 2012. And from what I can gather, uh, there was no course in the United States devoted just to IPv6 before the course I designed and teach as a uh, special uh, summer course uh, every summer, all the way back, uh, going back to 2012, this course in IPv6, where students get hands-on uh, skills and, of course, the background requisite knowledge related to using this protocol and deploying this protocol. And uh, I, I was published on the Aaron blog, and I, I'm in contact with the IPv6 forum in re relation to my class, my course, because uh, there are certifications that are awarded by this organization known as the IPv6 forum. And the students who take my course and successfully complete the course and pass the certification exam at the end of the semester, they get a high-level, very respectable certification from the IPv6 forum. So recently, the IPv6 forum decided to uh, give me a tremendous honor and induct me into the IPv6 forum's Hall of Fame. It's officially called the New Internet IPv6 Hall of Fame. And what, what that particular uh, entity looks to do is to basically celebrate the development and deployment of IPv6 and to award those who have made, according to the uh, website, uh, to award those who made extraordinary contributions to IPv6. The first inductee to the IPv6 Hall of Fame was none other than Vince Cerf, one of the guys responsible for developing the TCP IP protocol suite. So it's a tremendous honor to be in this Hall of Fame with Vince Cerf and a lot of other uh, leading, uh, as we're called, evangelists for IPv6.
And congratulations on the well-deserved accolade, I might add. So you. when you're teaching this course at FLCC, if I can infer from the conversation that we've had, any device that is connected to the Internet has to have an IP address. And we run out of the IPv4 so what you're doing in your class is teaching students the ability to uh, program for IVP6, which we're hoping is what is going to become the new normal, the new standard as we move forward. That's right. The, the problem is that there are some organizations that are complacent with their current IPv4 infrastructure, and they're using that mentality of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But now's the time to make the change and adapt and migrate to the new addressing scheme. And just in terms of numbers, they're staggering. I told you that there are only 4.3 billion unique addresses. And Aaron, the American Registry of Internet Numbers, actually ran out of IPv4 addresses in 2015. So any new companies, any new organizations that wanted to get connected, what did they have to do? They had to use they had to use IPv6 from the start, and you might say, "Hmm, okay, let's uh, think about this. How many IPv6 addresses are there?" And there are some stats and uh, collections of information that people have collected that make your eyeballs pop out. For instance, IPv6's address space is literally some people calculated this. Over 10 million trillion times the total number of grains of sand on all of the beaches in the world. And then, according to some other stat, it, we could assign an IPv6 address to every atom on the surface of the Earth and still have enough addresses left to do another 100 plus Earths. So it doesn't look like uh, IPv7 uh, is going to be needed, uh, <laughs> if ever, for uh, a very, very long time. Now, let's talk about how this uh, applies for uh, students when they go out into the workplace. What's the advantage of this, and uh, does this extend into things like cybersecurity? I know that's a big, booming industry right now. Absolutely. In fact, the, uh, the degree program at FLCC is known as the Networking and Cybersecurity degree program. You can't really have one without the other. You can't set up networks and maintain networks and troubleshoot networks without securing networks. So the students coming out of the program, especially with this particular course, this IPv6 course labeled as CSC 206, and if you're wondering, yes, I purposely pushed to have that 200 level course designated as 206 for IPv6. So the students that are going out in the workforce, not only with IPv6 experience, but with a certification from one of the leading organizations in terms of IPv6 in the world, they are going to be so marketable and potential employers are going to look so favorably upon them having the certification and really the hands-on skills and knowledge under their belt related to this protocol of the future. And as we wrap up here, uh, Jonathan, if people want to find out more information about taking this course, when it's available, so on and so forth, uh, how do they do that? Well, you can go to flcc.edu and check out our course list, but I'd personally be able to uh, answer any questions. If anybody wants to get in touch with me directly, you can get me at CSC Prof on Twitter, at CSC Prof. I'm on LinkedIn as well, Instagram, at CSC Prof. Feel free to contact me directly. I'd be happy to personally answer any questions that you have. And in the span of the last 15 minutes, I have learned more about the Internet than I ever, ever knew. Jonathan, thank you so much. Fascinating conversation. Happy holidays to you. Continued success. And uh, let's hope that IVP6, uh, or IPv6, I should say, becomes the industry standard going forward. You as well. And let me just conclude with the actual number, the estimated number of IPv6 addresses. It's 340 on decillion that's 340 trillion 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 addresses wow happy holidays now there's math for you all right jonathan thank you so much pleasure to speak with you sir likewise